Betsy and Thomas here for the American Intelligence Media. Today we are doing Trump tweets of October 16th, and it's good to see POTUS is back with some amazing tweets. He's been pretty busy with the rallies lately, and so we figured that y'all can figure that out yourself, okay? Now, Thomas, um, I want to point everyone to go to the production notes, the description box, and look and see what we have, because you're going to be talking a little bit about George Papadopoulos. Um, the guy is on fire. He is turning out to be one amazing patriot. We want to bring your attention uh, to an article that we've put together with his latest tweets. And the other thing is, I'd like to give a call out to You Are Free TV. She just does an amazing job breaking down the news, even to a detail that we can't possibly get to on our audios. She took the audio that we did yesterday about the end of the Fed and what we think is the new currency that's being rolled out in America right um, under your noses. And she did a great job putting that together. So I have that link there as well. So, Tom. Thomas, are you in your seat, ready to get started? Uh, well, this is T. Clearance. These are treat. Uh, this is T. Non Anon, and this is directly connected to the White House because we are certain that the Trump tweets have a direct connection to the president. Okay, the first one today. Thank you to the Cherokee Nation for revealing that Elizabeth Warren, sometimes referred to as Pocahontas, is a complete and total fraud. As Trump said. And she, like all good mobocrats, democrats who call themselves Democrats, will come out now and with zero, zero, zero percent Indian in her blood, yells that Trump can't take away her Indian heritage. <laughs> yells the lie. Yells the opposite of the people she paid to analyze this. Yells because there's point zero 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 six nine 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 one point, you know, way so far less than one percent. It's no percent. That's what it's called, zero percent. She has zero percent. She has less American blood, Indian blood in her than most Americans. She is a liar. She actually used this. Remember, don't forget this. Why is she fighting this? She was on a scholarship at Harvard. They paid for her to be there because she was an American Indian. And then they paid for her to start the, what was it, the that bureau she started, the um, which basically was a way to, ste to steal money. And she was so mad that after she got kicked out of that, she you know ran for office. And now she wants to be the president. The president of a country she says she is an Indian, an American Indian of when she is nothing more than a big fat freaking liar using the normal mob technique of take the truth, yell that it's not true, and then just keep yelling it's a lie until really uninformed people believe you. Well, this really is about a larger issue, Thomas, and that is that the Democrats, the mobocrats, have nobody, listen, they have <laughs> nobody that can beat Trump. Now, they have rolled out Deval Patrick. Oh, God, we've got dirt on that guy. Kamala Harris. Oh, please. I mean, she, we, her background, once she gets on center stage, we're going to rip her apart. And then Joe Biden, Mr. Pedophile himself, Joe Biden. And he has like 34%. They have nobody because Hillary was all about Hillary and Bill. She was never about the Democrat Party and bringing new blood into the new Democrat Party, unless, of course, it was blood she needed to keep going. <laughs> That's funny, Betsy. If people Is there don't anybody know what else you, you can think of that they try to put out? And and they they have nobody. No, no. As a matter this of fact, all of them combined don't even equal. Uh, uh, if all of them, all the support for all of them combined, there's how many candidates? 20 somewhere yeah. analyzed. All of them come up to like 20% or the, something. You know, it's really great because t Trump won't have to spend as much on the 2020 campaign since he will have no contenders. So th that money th then can go down to house races so we can totally, totally make this place red. Oh, it's going to be beautiful. Okay. Next tweet. It's a quote. Op-ed praises Trump administration's efforts at the border. That was from Fox News. The Washington Examiner states, quote, Finally, the government has taken steps to stop releasing unaccompanied minors to criminals and traffickers, close quote. 
This was done by the Obama administration. And, you know, that was that wicked Leslie Stahl. What a wicked old hag she has become, the way that she interviewed our POTUS on 60 Minutes, berating him for what Obama did. Where was the outrage when Obama did this? Why isn't Obama going to jail for human trafficking? Because everybody knows that program. He actually called for unaccompanied minors to come to the border. He called for them and had the hugest amount of them ever arrive at our border, unaccompanied minors. They were raped and trafficked up to the border, and then they were raped and trafficked after they got crossed that border because Trump, uh, excuse me, who has been trying to put up a border, is willing to stop them at the border, whereas Obama not only didn't stop them at the border, he brought them in and gave them airplane rides to different parts of the country so that he could human traffic them. Try to find any of those young people now. They were supposedly released to relatives of theirs and or just placed in homes. You can't find them now. So what is that? That's murder. Well, when we were looking at some of the uh, Zodiac Killer information that came in a couple of months ago, we were noticing that there seems to be some kind of uh, human trafficking flow from the border right up through Maxine Waters' district, right on up to Diane Feinstein, Nancy Pelosi's districts, all up in this California uh, West Coast Strip. Is, is that what you're seeing? Yes, and it goes all the way uh, to Canada. And Canada is the place where then they do more uh, organ Uh, harvesting than anywhere else in North America and British Columbia. And they do it up in the mountains where things are very exclusive. And the connections there have been shown to be very, very, very strong, very powerful. We are quite certain that that is going on. The next tweet is, uh, the United States has strongly informed the president of Honduras that if a large caravan of people heading to the U.S. is not stopped and brought back to Honduras, no more money or aid will be given to Honduras, effective immediately. Now, do you think he really means that? He's already said he was going to do this. When the first caravan came, he warned Mexico, but he couldn't do it then because he was in the changing of the NAFTA to the bilat well, now to the agreements with Mexico and Canada. So he couldn't do it then. He's going to do it this time. And what he's going to do is, sorry, Mexico, yes, you just made a deal with us. But the U.S. aid, which is... a uh, uh, two years ago, $84 billion given out by the Secretary of State to anybody that the Secretary of State wants to give it to. He's closing that down, and he's taken control of that, and he's going to take back the U.S. aid to Honduras or to anywhere else who attempts to do these type of migrant migration. These aren't migrations. These are the worst of the criminals coming out of that country that they don't want to have in their jails. Plain and simple, and you see it by all the ones we have to arrest who are already proven to be criminals wanted in other countries, in their country particularly, and particularly Honduras. And what's going to happen? He is going to stop it this time because this is a beautiful chance once again to underscore that the midterm should go to the Republicans, not the Democrats, because the Democrats want lawlessness at the border. They want human trafficking. They want Obama to come back and Hillary to continue the killing of Obama, of the unaccompanied minors, which never even happened in history before. Unaccompanied minors inviting them to the border? Well, how do you think they got there, Mr. Obama? Exactly as you know how they got there, human trafficking. There's hardly a woman Uh, that comes across our border that hasn't been raped, southern border. This is the worst of the worst, and you have the Democrats saying, knock down the borders. The next tweet is from Charles Payne at Fox News. He says that eight times more new manufacturing jobs now than with Obama. Well, that's because China has been beaten down in the war with China, and the eight times more manufacturing jobs is because we're taking them back from China. And we are actually moving some of those manufacturing facilities from countries outside of America to America. And so it's part of Trump's plan. It's what he said he could do, and he's followed through on everything. I think they have, what, 289 promises that he's kept on their site, if you want to go to the Promises Kept site, uh, which is just incredible. Nobody has followed through. There have been presidents who didn't follow through on one single promise, let alone 289 of them. So what's happening here is, sorry, Hillary. That's why Hillary's out on her book tour. She needs money because her Walmart stock is going down. Remember, she is a paid member of the Walton family. 
uh, board, which means that she basically gets a cut of every deal that Bill did with China that brought in the Walmart overthrow of American manufacturing. You know, a related tweet, I'm just going to skip over one, is uh, it says that incredible number just out. 7,036,000 job openings. Astonishing. It's all working. Stock market up big on tremendous potential of USA. Also strong profits. We're number one in world by far. I'm glad you jumped to that because that's absolutely true. And he keeps quoting the statistics and the enemies and they are enemies of the people. They are enemies of the Constitutional Republic of America. Simply tell lies to try to uh, downgrade his tremendous success. But basically, remember, 7 million job openings. And this is while the Fed is warring against him, trying to bring down his economic surge by raising interest rates. When the globalists are warring against him with all the previous trade deals were against him, the climate uh, accord was against he is winning bigger than anybody knows. Well, this is great because, um, yes, I am going to that tweet, uh, Thomas. Uh, I just wanted to skip over since this one um, had to do with uh, job openings. So, are you okay? Do you need anything more of that? Okay, so we skipped over one. Um, and so let's go back. For the record, I have no financial interest in Saudi Arabia or Russia for that matter. Any suggestion that I have is just more fake news, of which there's plenty. Oh, my Lord, yes. Matter of fact, he would have loved to have deals with Saudi Arabia and Russia before he became ran for president. He would have loved it, but he was locked out. He wasn't a globalist. He wasn't allowed into those deals. But the second that he started to run, Comey set up Felix Sater to take Trump people to Russia to uh, and to Georgia and to other places in uh, Crimea and literally to Moscow and say, hey, we're going to build you a Trump Towers here. Felix Sater was an agent of the FBI. So Trump never had any association with them. He would have loved to have, even during the uh, campaign, or just before the campaign, uh, when Felix Sater baited them so that later they could say, Trump has associations with Russia. Uh, no, he doesn't, except for running the Miss Universe pageant there once. And as Putin said, he is one of thousands, if not tens of thousands of businessmen who come to Russia. Why would I be concerned about speaking with him? <laughs> So, no, he isn't connected. And they're trying to insinuate, of course, that Trump is somehow part of, oh, if they, if Trump doesn't go after, and we'll get to that in a minute, the murderers of Jamal Khashoggi, oh, Lord, this is a joke. And then they're trying to insinuate that Trump somehow has connections to Saudi Arabia, and that's why he's protecting this person who, this uh writer who worked for the Washington Post. We'll get there in a minute, but no, he's not connected in any way. Uh, George Bush Sr., George H.W. Bush, lived at the palace of King Saad and was so close to them during the entire time of his of his uh, presidential, camp, uh, presidential time in the White House, as well as his son, baby Bush. They literally kiss him. The King Saad and, and all so, his family kissed them, hold their hands, walk with them. They lived in their house. They took their money. That's where they got all their oil money to do their... Baby Bush got all of his oil money directly from the Saudi Arabians. And they want to think and accuse Trump of having connections with the Saudis? And so is that where George Bush would have made his connections with the Saudis to arrange for the 9-11-2001 event? Yes, absolutely. Another word about Saudi Arabia. Right now, there's it's in the news. It's absurd, completely absurd. Why are they accusing Trump of doing nothing to go after the alleged murder of Jamal Khashoggi? Let me explain this to you. You better sit down. Jamal Khashoggi's uncle was the biggest arms dealer of his time and, st and was, even up until recently when he died, for George Bush Sr. He actually opened Barrick Gold, the fake gold mine with George Bush, okay? You can't get any closer. Ad Adon, the uncle of Jamal, Adnan Khashoggi, was the head of the Saudi intelligence agency at, uh, who was just had, re just had gotten out of it at the time of 911. So there is no doubt beyond anyone's mind who looks into this that Adon Kinsoji was directly connected to the Bush's attack on 911. And if you haven't read about that, look for our intelligence reports on it. But the point is, 
Jamal Khashoggi's grandfather was the doctor for King Saad. Okay, they are all they, they. You couldn't get any closer than these people. Okay, so who is Jamal? Jamal was basically the minister of truth for Saudi Arabia before he came to work for Washington Post. We hired a Saudi Arabian spy, directly connected to one of the biggest criminals in in world history, Adnan Khashoggi. And when he gets killed because he's criticizing the current administration, especially the crown prince of, of Saudi Arabia, you must be out of your mind. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. We, we didn't hire him. Who hired him? The Washington Post. Which is nothing more There's than... Jeff Bezos' blog. He's a globalist. So what we're really seeing here, folks, if you pay attention, the globalists are on the run. They're trying to do anything to start some kind of world event so they can get a handle on things. They're trying to start... Um, You know, Trump said it was rogue agents who probably did this, or he used the word rogue. And of course, everyone, at least in our circle of influence, immediately thought of rogue CIA. Oh, absolutely. The CIA basically ran the military for King Saud. I mean, that's just a fact. All you got to do is look at it. Those were our planes. Those were our pilots. Those were our military bases. We have protected Saudi Arabia for the oil all the way back to Standard Oil going in and stealing it. Now, it's important to remember that what Trump is facing is the following, that it was a in Turkey and it was a Saudi embassy that this American, which he's not an American, I'm sure he's a dual citizen, who is basically a, is, is a Saudi spy working for, for Jeff Bezos in the Washington Post, and he has always been a minister of truth. It's just that he's moved to America to spread it because they needed a stronger minister of truth for the global evil people that Jeff Bezos, you know, needs to run the Washington Post. So they took the, literally, literally the, what would be called our kind of, we call it the rogue CIA. It's the rogue Saudi intelligence. And it was headed by Adnan Khashoggi and his nephew ran, just go back and look. He ran all of the major papers that were supported by the Saud family, by, by the royalty. So he is. He deserves. I'm sorry to have to say this. I'm sorry to be so cruel, but he was the responsible for the death of many, many people, uh, and so that he has been killed and chopped up or whatever. Well, you know what? Why did he think he wasn't going to be when he turned against the very person, the crown prince, who took the richest men in the country and hung them upside down by their feet until they gave out the codes and the numbers for their offshore accounts to get their money. Why did this guy working in America think he was protected by Jeff Bezos from the very people who he is attacking? He's attacking the reigning king and crown prince of Saudi Arabia. He must be out of his mind. And he's been writing these things. I didn't realize this. I would have taken one second to say, oh, he'll be dead soon. Why would anybody be surprised? But why does Trump have to take, get involved? Because it involves Turkey, because he just made friends with Turkey. That's the reason they killed him on Turkish land in Istanbul. Well, they want to start some kind of war event. It would be very nice, because Saudi Arabia is backing who now? Israel. And so now you have the tension. Can you imagine? The Jews and the Muslims are working together, the Sunnis, against the Shiites. This is unprecedented in history, but this is what it's about. And uh, uh, President Erdogan is, of course, uh, just recently come back into good favor with President Trump because of uh, Andrew uh, uh, Bernson, Bronson, I'm sorry, Bernson, sorry. Are you talking about the pastor? Bronson, Bronson. B-R-U-N-S-O-N. Thank you so much, Betsy. That's why you're here. Because (laughs) listen, without you, I'd be way off. Okay, now that you stopped, I have to ask you because a lot of people are talking on the internet about these F-22 fighters that were at Tyndall Air Force Base, and they're not there anymore. And they're looking at the hurricane and where these went. And one of our uh, readers, Susan, and thank you so much, Susan, sent us an article that in August many of these planes, and it says in the article, were flown over to Germany. But what the people are saying on the internet is that they are actually being flown to Israel for Netanyahu's use. I can't find anything to substantiate that. What what would you have to say from the wisdom point of view? 
Well, the conclave has already looked at this, and we've decided 100%, everyone in complete agreement, the following. Tyndall Air Force Base in Florida was the target of the weaponized Hurricane Michael. One of the targets. Of course, also MAGA voters in the panhandle, as we have shown through uh, conversations with uh, Michael Thomas and through articles that you've been posting in Truth News headlines again and again and again. But here's the bottom line, okay? Now, we've always told you. There are probably more money missing from the Air Force contracts than we owe the U.S. Fed, and that is not an exaggeration. They, we've already found $21 trillion that went to Lockheed, Boeing, BAE, which are all owned by the Queen. Okay, don't forget, Lockheed is not American. Uh, BAE is 100% British. Because and, remember, we're still under British control. Correct. And, and Boeing is, uh, uh, huge portions of it are owned by British control. But anyway, the point is, the F-22 and other stealth fighters and bombers uh, that were stored in Tyndall uh, Air Force Base, one of the major places. It was obviously a big fake that what they told us about these F-22s because the following. The storm was, you can see it, and we've posted things on Truth News Headlines that show how it was controlled and aimed directly at Tyndall. Well, they took all the, the stealth bombers and fighters, the F-22s particularly, and they flew them out that could fly out. And we said... Well, no, here's what's really going on. Lockheed and Boeing have created the worst plane in U.S. Air Force history. It uh, Never more than a third of them are ready to fly. So when they aimed this hurricane at Tyndall, they had already moved through secrecy the majority of these F-22s to bases in Germany which they were going to then use to attack Syria, and they did. But what they did here is much, much, much worse than that. They said that they took the F-22s and flew them to places in America, and then what they're going to say is that 60 of them were destroyed, and even more than that were destroyed. Why? Because, remember, only 33% of them have they ever been able to really get functional at any one time, and in general, they really can't get it functional. It's a terrible, terrible uh, aircraft. And so this is the way that they hide trillions of dollars. Uh, a fake storm comes in and hits the hangars with the F-22s in them, and then they say that they were destroyed by the storm. No, they weren't. They're non-functional. We should, the Lockheed should have to give the money back, but because the Brits never give any money back, money only goes one way with them. We're not getting any money back. They hid the F-22s, flew some of them north, saying that that's where some of them went so that everyone would be comp- confused about the numbers because people were tracking this, and they'd already noticed 60 of them gone, flown out on a mission to Germany. Well, we know that in Syria, when the Revolutionary Guard, the Iranian Revolutionary Guard, through the money of Obama, started buying missiles to give to Syria. That at first, the first time it happened, 30 missiles went there. Israel and the whole world warned them, don't fire them. They did, and their defense system knocked down all but two. Then they moved in an embankment of of more than 30. They moved in 30 embankments of missiles. Nothing is, uh, excuse me, and then Israel did nothing about that. But out of the blue, not long ago, Stealth bombers, or somebody who didn't get shown up on radar, they couldn't stop, they didn't even fire at them, blew up those embankments of missiles with absolute laser pinpoint accuracy. Now, there's even many more that have been moved into Syria. So those stealth fighters are actually working for and with Israel, and they are bombing them because Israel was having some problems because there's just so many of them coming in because the Iranian guard was given billions of dollars by Obama to continue this type of confusion throughout the world to cause chaos so that the globalists can move in for their central banks, move in for the oil, move in for the oil in the Levant, move in for the oil in uh, the Levant uh, basin in the Mediterranean, which Israel is, is gleaning more than anyone. No other country that has the rights to that oil can get it because Israel is always disturbing them with war. So that's what's going on with the F-22 fighters, but there were also bombers involved. 
Well, very good. I can't wait now. I know the next few audios are going to be with Michael McKibben, and the two of you are going to further explain what's going on in China and why Hillary and her cabal is moving there. And, and you know, folks, we are really getting the, the globalist in a corner. And it's thanks to everybody who's awakened now, paying attention, like the amateurs that'll go in after these hurricanes and just analyze the doggone every detail of them and show us what's really happening. Because it's we the people of the world, all of us, from Australia to Germany to America, it is we the people that can overturn these evil cabal globalists that have been ruling us for thousands of years, and we've got to do it this time. Because we have an anti-globalist president, and he is on the move, and he is the best leader of the Republican Party, MAGA particularly, that has ever existed in our country, and right now we're going to see, because all of you are going to vote, go out and vote Republican, we're going to see a red wave that gets those absolute bimbos, those democrats we, out. And when we do, then we're in a better position to help other countries and other citizens around the world. Okay, now, can we get to horse face? Oh, please, yes. So uh, Trump has given Stormy Daniels a name, horse face. You know, that really is a slap in the face for a woman whose a whole profession is on her looks and to be, in the end, called a horse face. So he's, quote, federal judge throws out Stormy Daniels' lawsuit versus Trump. Trump is entitled to full legal fees, close quote. Great, now I can go after horse face and her third-rate lawyer in this great state of Texas. She will confirm the letter she signed. She knows nothing about me. A total con. As we told you... David Brock paid her $385,000 to come out with this lie. And I have called her from the beginning the same name that Trump just called her horse face, but I took out the S. I hope you get the joke, y'all. She is one ugly woman, and I have said from the beginning, there is no way Trump, the most available bachelor in the world at one point, women throwing himself at their feet, U.S. Uh, 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 beauty pageants, U.S. international, doesn't matter. Top every top model in the world wanted Trump. Okay, so why would, why he, would he go with that pig? She yes. is an ugly, ugly horse face pig. She is even disgusting. When she was younger. Oh, he had beautiful women. Look at Melania. Oh yeah. my. Now Ma- Michael Aventia. Uh, uh, Avenatti, Avenatti, another one who wants to run against Trump. Yeah, he owes two between they don't know for sure between ten and twenty million dollars in taxes and may go to jail. But now he gets saddled with the legal fees, so he got paid nothing. So all the money that she got, she probably, horse face, or I'd like to call her a different name. Well, pretty soon she's going to be a bag lady because this is going to wipe her out financially. And, you know, what's she going to do for a living at that point? She is an ugly, disgustingly, filthy, pathetic. Okay, we got it, Thomas. Let's move on. uh, uh, The only thing worse than that is her lawyer. And the lawyer is going to have to pay the legal fees. And she had to pay him the legal fees. He's going to have to pay Trump the legal fees. And Trump... Gets to laugh all the way to the bank. Plus, this shows that the Democrats literally come out and do things like this, don't get caught. And even when, uh, like Pocahontas, or even when uh, Horseface here is found to be completely false... That's it. They they just won't say a okay. word. So so she was paid. We do we do, are we leaping and saying it was David Brock and Media Matters that supports these kinds of people? No, she, David Brock came out in public and said he will pay three hundred seventy five thousand dollars to anyone who can come forward that can say that Trump had molested them or in any way sexually inappropriately touched them or anything whatsoever. Four women came forward. Horseface was one of them. The other one has come forward again, and she's been so discredited that she's backed off. The other two said, I'm not going to do this. It's a lie. He had them lined up. He had the four of them standing there. People don't seem to recognize or remember this. David Brock was proud to say, here are the four women that Trump has raped or had sex with why he was married or anything they wanted to make up. Remember when they showed the disc, the CD disc? Oh, when she reveals this, Trump's going down. Nothing was ever revealed from that disc, now was it? Yes, but David Brock is so easy to take down. So I'm asking Stephen Munchen if he will give the IRS a new commissioner a nudge because his 
illegalities with uh, the t- how he has not paid taxes is right there in the internet. Anybody can find it. And if citizens can bring up all of this indictable evidence, why can't the IRS commission look into David Brock and Media Matters and all their illegalities and slam them for it? Shut him down. Uh, they should. And he admits it. Yeah. He tried to defend himself that he had, what was it, 20 different offices running out of his office, and they were all George Soros funded through either Tides or Open Society? This, to me, is proof that a new IRS commissioner can do his job. Uh, Okay, next tweet. And this is a quote. And if you're a Q, Anon, you might want to leave us now. Quote, conflict between Glenn Simpson's testimony to another House panel about his contact with Je- Justice Department official Bruce Orr. Orr was used by Simpson and Steele as a back channel to get fake dossier to FBI. Simpson pleading fifth, close quote. Now that was from Catherine Herridge. But Trump tweets, where is Jeff Sessions? Well, we now know where Jeff Sessions is. We thought that he was Rip Van Winkle, and he hadn't. He went to took a nap after he got uh, no, appointed and he's never working woke up. on the plan, the big plan. He's the White Hat. Oh, that's what the silly people say. Uh, that Jeff Sessions is working behind the scenes. He's got one hundred seventy five thousand indictments all ready to go. Blah, blah. That's all a lie. Here's where Jeff Sessions is. We didn't know for sure. Now, one hundred percent, one hundred absolute percent sure. We know where Jeff Sessions is. He's in the same bunk as Rat Rodenstein. They sleep together at night. And it seems as if Diane Feinstein is sleeping with Glenn Simpson. Now let's remember that Diane Feinstein came out after the testimony behind closed doors with Diane Feinstein when she was uh, the head Democrat on the Senate Intelligence Committee. She came out and released Glenn Simpson's testimony. Remember that? Oh, yeah. That was because those were to be the talking points so everyone would know what lie to tell. Because they had said, and remember when uh, Glenn Simpson's wife, Mary McCoby, said, I'm really upset. My husband and I wrote that. My husband's a good writer. He didn't get any help from anybody else. He wrote it. He wrote it. He wrote it. He wrote it. Right? He didn't write it. He gathered it together and was paid $12 million, and then he paid, I love it, $180,000 to Christopher Steele. He got $11 million and change, and poor Glenn Simpson got $180,000, and he's he's taken the fall. And Dianne Feinstein was then protecting Glenn Simpson. Well, really what it comes down to now is, because Glenn Simpson is pleading the fifth, they weren't talking points that Dianne Feinstein released and then quit the committee, so they couldn't charge her with anything. And And she jumps over to judiciary. On the Brett Kavanaugh nonsense, which again, Pelosi is demanding that what the FBI report reported that they all read that was secret be released. And Feinstein says, don't release it, don't release it, don't release it. Why? Because it reveals the truth. And they don't want to know the truth that Feinstein was behind actually coercing the people that were used as the uh, witnesses for the stupid Kavanaugh hearing when uh, Christine Blasey Ford came in. They actually extorted those witnesses, and that's in the FBI report. But anyway, going back, Glenn Simpson has to plead the fifth because everything he's going to say now is not going to be talking points. They will be por- perjury points. Everything Glenn Simpson said that were the talking points that were given out to the public, all lies. We now know it by Bruce Orr's testimony behind closed doors. We know it by James Baker's testimony saying that Bruce Orr was, in fact, the contact with the Democratic National Committee. We know that uh, Michael Sussman from Perkin Coy was in direct contact with James Baker and Comey and the whole group, we say, in the FBI that was led by Peter Strzok. He was the fall guy, at least, really started by John Brennan. So what we're talking about is where is the, Jeff Sessions? The, he is in bed with Rat Rodenstein. Okay, I know metaphorically, but really, seriously, what does he do? He gets up, goes to work. What does he do? No, they all literally sit in the bunk together and make their little plans, and then they do pinky promises to, that they swear they won't tell anybody. Okay? I mean, literally, it is that bad. But every once in a while, Jeff Sessions will come out and do a speech and do something where you think, oh, you know, okay, he's making progress. Is that a, What is that about? 
Well, his last speech uh, said he was making progress, and then basically what he said was against what Trump believes and what Trump does, and he is he is the worst. And if Trump could get rid of him politically, he would, but he doesn't need to because the spotlight on these people has done exactly what we said. The longer the Mueller investigation goes on, the more the entire inner cabal, evil lawyer fixers of D.C. are going to be brought out into the light and don't and and we shouldn't worry about it because it's the treasury department that's doing the heavy lifting right now right trump had to bypass the entire intelligence community and go to only two i've told you who the one is and i told you who the second one is though i don't like to say it because it's it's quite effective and he just wrote a new executive order giving the, these very people unbelievable power well, I tell and you I what. haven't addressed that because I don't want to blow his plan, okay. but I've told you who it is in case you want to look. Okay, uh, no, 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 no. What we'll hard. do is we'll put that on Truth News headlines. We'll just put that as who else is helping so people will know. Okay, you have to look for it. Okay? Very good. Yes, we'll make, well, we've already provided articles. We'll resurrect some of them because I don't want to draw attention no. to this group. No, it, we've reached a point in the information war where we have to be careful about the intelligence and the information we're finding because we think that it could throw a, a wrench in the works. Absolutely. And it's some now, th- some things are too powerful for us to release until the appropriate moment. But just know that we're feeling pretty good over here in the conclave. Oh, it's winning. Oh my gosh. Yes. The MAGA winning. These guys are drunk on cappuccinos over here. I mean, you know, all they do is have time to eat to cheesecake. It's just pathetic. They, they really hardly do any more work. I don't know why you... Why they're even allowed here? By you know? the way, I got a fresh stock of everything for <laughs> Michael's don't like survival. What I just, they don't like what I just said, Betsy. <laughs> so I can't talk over you. So now, but we're going to go into more of the Bruce Orr. But I think this is a good place to take a moment and talk about George Papadopoulos because I am seeing a real patriot emerge from his tweets. And remember, you can look at these tweets uh, if you click on in the description box the link that I've provided for you. I'm so glad you brought up Georgie. Now, I have been really hard on him because he was so duped and he didn't seem to be awake at all when it was happening to him, but now he's become a patriot? Well, kind of. He got some good, ruthless New York lawyers, just like Carter Page yesterday came out and said he is going to sue the DNC for defamation, the Democratic National Committee, which will be Hillary, John Podesta, uh, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, Donna Brazile, the whole group, for defamation of character. He hit, because in the Trump dossier, which now everybody is see, sees and they said he was going to get $4.5 billion for doing a deal under the table. He was going to be put on Gaz prom board and he's going to be the king of the universe. That's insane. So he is now, after saying over and over again that he would not sue, though he was going to sue BuzzFeed. Now we're talking about Carter Page. Carter Page said okay. he was not going to sue BuzzFeed over the Michael Isakoff article, which blasted him, which we now know was written by Christopher Steele and used as evidence for the fourth FISA warrant, for the fourth FISA warrant to show absolute proof. They took an article that was bogus from BuzzFeed written by Christopher Steele under the name of a BuzzFeed author, Michael Isakoff. Lie, lie, lie. So that alone will get Carter Page money. So Carter Page had... I'm sure ruthless New York lawyers come to him. George Papadopoulos had ruthless New York lawyers come to him and say, do you understand that the crossfire hurricane, now that it's out, that you can sue for all the money you would have ever made in your whole life times 100? Well, the attorneys, of course, want a cut of that, so they're very motivated. Yes. But who does he sue? Because, and I'm talking about George Papadopoulos, because as you know, our intelligence has taken this all the way back to the heart of the monarchy in the United Kingdom. Does he go as far back as suing the Queen? He could sue John Brennan. He could sue Peter Strzok. He could sue the CIA, the FBI, the DOJ, and everyone else who was complicit with this. He can sue Stephen Halper. He can sue Joseph Mifsud. He can sue... Andrew Wood, Alexander Downer, all of the people involved in setting him up and giving him fu- new, they literally created an institute but that they made him the head of. But where are you going to find a judge who isn't in the swamp to protect these people? That is almost impossible, except for the hundreds of new judges that Trump has appointed. At the same time Kavanaugh got went, went through his uh, confirmation hearing and got appointed, I think there were 280 other appointees out of the 1,400 still awaiting that were also uh, passed through. So there are some new judges coming. So 
But the, pro- the problem is, is that the top dogs are the ones who assign the cases. And when they assign the cases, they know exactly what the outcome will be. And that's why it's a fake justice system. So, yes, tough finding a good lawyer in D.C. Okay, well, good. Uh, and George, if you get a hold of this, remember, contact us. We'd love to do a show with you. We know a lot of the background that will probably be very beneficial to you in your law case. And George, you have a case that is open and closed. You will win it. And what you are now revealing with the help of your lawyers, I'm glad you're waking up. Sorry to make fun of you that it took you so long to wake up. But dude, I knew you weren't on the bad side. Of course, you're on the good side. You were just being used by them. So do not hesitate to use those New York ruthless lawyers and go after all of them. Okay, back to the tweets. Is it really possible that Bruce Orr, whose wife Nellie, was paid by Simpson and GPS Fusion for work done on the fake dossier, and who was used as a pawn in this whole scam witch hunt, is still working for the Department of Justice? Can this really be so? Uh, Yeah, Peter Strzok is still working for the CIA. They said they fired him from the FBI. Because they're all senior executive service. You cannot fire them. And Bruce Orr is one of the 500 lawyers who controls the highest review board that controls the SES. They can't fire him. He's he's going to be looking at uh, the question of whether he could be fired. Look at Andrew McCabe. Look at any of them. Even the ones fired. If they weren't fired, they probably weren't SES. And so what happens here is they can't fire these people because they have extraordinary contracts written that basically allow them not to be fired. As I, we were making a joke the other day. What's Mitch McConnell's wife's name? Elaine Chow. We say, how did a Chinese spy who's literally, their relatives sit on the Chinese shipping board and she's the head of transportation in America Secretary of Transportation. How did that happen? SES doesn't have to go through any background checks, criminal checks. You don't even have to put your right name on the page. You don't have to be an American. Nothing. And you can then be paid more than civil servant. You start at a salary that is more than a civil servant who's worked for 30 years. That's your starting salary. That's who these people are. SES members are almost impervious. Now, let's remember. They are enemies to the Constitution. Oh, yes. And the longer that these people stay in their jobs and that Trump keeps pointing them out shows you how entrenched this enemy called the Senior Executive Service is in, is embedded in our government and working against us. Absolutely. The grand jury indictment or grand jury uh, impaneling uh, against uh, Andrew McCabe, they're not going to find any crimes. If you couldn't find Andrew McCabe's crimes, you'd have to be blind. Really. Why? He's SES. Oh, who's SES? Uh, that would be Michael Horowitz, who's investigating the leaks. Oh, did you see that uh, Ali Watkins' boyfriend, who who James gave Wolf. out James Wolf, who gave who, the head of the security staff for the Feinstein Burr? Uh, Please, he lied. He has done so much more than committed perjury. Why do they always do that? Oh, perjury charge when they should be held for treason. Uh, he revealed so much top secret information from FISA courts down to everything. He was the institutionalized leak, and everybody knew it. It's just that he was getting some action with good old Ali Watkins on, on top of it, but many other institutionalized leaks were happening. He gets perjury? No. And Michael Horowitz didn't pick up that case? It was picked up independently? So when Michael Horowitz actually finds someone that they can't, that they have to protect... This is what happens. He didn't put it in his investigation. He let the Department of Justice and Jeff Sessions woke up long enough to say, yeah, let's get him out on uh, just uh, perjury charges and let's drop the charges once we charge him and indict him and convict him with this. We're not going to give any punishment. That's what will happen. We predicted that will happen because James Wolfe is one of the worst people. He worked for directly for Feinstein, for Mark Warner, for Richard Burr, these criminals, for, for uh, Rubio, They were the ones who commissioned the dossier. They worked hand in hand from day one with the Russian dossier and invited Christopher Steele, which we've seen letters again and again, begging Christopher Steele to come and talk to the committee themselves. Unbelievable. In other words, treason and sedition was invited into the Senate Intelligence Committee by Mark Werner and Diane Feinstein and Jeff Wolf, James Wolf, and Henry Kerner, who was John McCain's 
uh, step and fetch it boy with this situation because it was John McCain who was also in on from the beginning. He's the one who gave them the Russian names of the Russians to go work with, which was, of course, our favorite Russian oligarch, Oleg Dar- Deripaska, who he met with secretly throughout all of this. So John McCain has died because John McCain has disappeared. I do not believe for one minute, really, that anything you that know, I was shown on the television about his funeral. You know, um, we were really pushing the issue of proof of life of, about John McCain right before his supposedly death, you know. I mean, it was days before. I want to start pushing on another proof of life. I want to see proof of life for Julian Assange. I think it's all smoke and mirrors. They say that his internet connection has been somewhat restored and that he has some kind of communication. I don't, I, I'm just beginning to question it. We have not seen a physical appearance of Julian Assange from that embassy in a long time. I don't think he's there. He no longer runs WikiLeaks. They have new people running it. And it was right after you pointed out that it looks like they spirited him away in a van. Yes. And if he was out, they wouldn't tell anybody now, would they? And if he wasn't out or dead, they wouldn't tell anybody. So it is bad possibly what's going on or it could possibly be very very good and at one point he may come to america and testify if he has true immunity and when that happens then we're going to really find out about what happened so don't believe for a minute that he is there in the embassy until we see proof of life we need proof of life the final tweet that i have on the page today is a video you can go in there and watch it and it's just trump reminding people about the horrific things that'll happen if pelosi remains uh, and has to become the speaker of the house along with all of her uh what do you call mobocrat friends and that was with the obamacare situation any comments on that I have said for a long time that Nancy Pelosi no longer has her mental capacities and all you have to do is listen to her and to think that the Democrats want her to be the third person in line to be the president. That's disgusting. they have. They are so bankrupt.